Assalam o Alaikum viewers, welcome to Virtual University. In today's lesson, we will be looking at a reading text which is about primary and secondary memory in a computer. We are going to follow the same pattern as established in the earlier lessons. You are required to listen carefully as I read the text and then together we will do the exercises that follow the reading passage. Now the passage is about primary and secondary memory. The term memory is usually used to refer to the internal storage refer to the internal storage locations of a computer. It is also called real storage or primary memory and is expressed as quantities of k. For example, computers are advertised as having memories of 16 k or 152 k depending on their storage capacity. Each k is equal to 1024 bytes and each byte is equal to 8 bits. Primary memory is closely associated with the CPU because it stores programs and data temporarily thus making them immediately available for processing by the CPU. To facilitate processing two things are needed random access and speed. The former means that any part of the memory may be read or accessed equally quickly. This is made possible by the system of addresses in primary memory where the storage locations are like a series of tiny compartments each having its own address. These addresses are like the addresses of houses in that they do not change because they are always fixed, the control unit knows where to find them at a very high speed. When it finds them, it puts into the compartments whatever must go there and wipes out whatever was stored there. The information present in these compartments is called the contents of the memory. Most primary memory is costly and therefore it is used transiently which means that a program or part of it or parts of it is kept in internal storage while the program is being executed. This however is not true for mini and micro applications where the computer performs the same function referred to as a dedicated function all the time. But since computers must process vast quantities of data and programs, a lot of storage space is required. For this reason, various secondary memory technologies have been developed. Secondary memory devices fall into two categories, sequential devices and random access devices. Sequential devices permit information to be written onto or read off some storage medium in a fixed sequence only. In order to get at a particular data item, it is necessary to pass over all the data preceding it. An example of such a device is the magnetic tape. Its cost is low, but access to specified data may take a considerable length of time. On the other hand, Random access devices are designed to permit direct or almost direct access to specified data. These devices bypass large quantities of irrelevant data and therefore reduce access time considerably. An example of this technology is the magnetic disk which is faster than the magnetic tape and also more expensive. When disks are hooked up to the computer and used as an extension of internal storage in order to increase the capacity of primary memory, this is called virtual storage. For example, a computer with 256 k bytes of real storage 
may seem to have 512 kbytes of virtual storage by using disks to provide additional storage. Now, take time and read the text you were I am sure you were reading it while I was reading it aloud. Now, to test your reading comprehension, three statements are given you. Which statement of the three best expresses the main idea of the text? After you have done that, you must state why you eliminated the other choices. Number one, there are two types of memory, primary and secondary. Is this the main idea of the text? Is this what the text is about? Number two, primary memory is more important than secondary memory. And number three, secondary memory devices are unimportant in a computer system. Now, out of these three, which one is the main expresses the main idea of the text. Simple, it is statement number 1, because this is what the whole text is about, about primary and secondary memory. The other two, the, the text does not say that primary memory is more important than secondary memory, no, and neither the third one. So, your first choice is the correct one. The, the text mentions that primary memory is very costly. It does not state that it is more important than secondary memory. Neither does it state that the latter is unimportant in a computer system. So, it was statement number 1 that was that states the main idea of the passage. Now, number two, understanding the passage. A number of statements are given and indicate whether the, the statements are really stated in the text or are they not stated in the text. Number one, the term memory can be expressed in other ways. The term memory can be expressed in other ways. Does the text say this or does it not? Yes, it does. It is stated that the term memory can be expressed in other ways. Number two, computers are often advertised according to their memory capacity. Does the text say that? Yes, it does, that computers are often advertised according to their memory capacity. This statement is also stated in the text. Number 3, the CPU can easily access information from internal storage. Statement number 3, the CPU can easily access information from internal storage. Is this statement stated or not? Yes, it is. The first three statements are there very clearly in the text. These are all statements that are there. Number four, mini computers and microcomputers have a similar memory capacity. Does the state, uh, does the text say that? No, not at all. So, that is not stated. Number 5, the control unit needs to know the location where information is stored or needs to be stored. The control unit needs to know the location where information is stored or needs to be stored not at all, it is not stated. So, number 4 and 5 are not stated. Number 6, primary memory is more expensive 
than secondary memory. Number 7, there are two types of secondary memory device. Number 8, information stored on magnetic disk can be retrieved faster than if that same information were on tape. All three, 6, 7 and 8, all three statements are there in the text. If you refer back, you will find that they are there. Number 9, disks and tapes can be stored in a library. Disks and tapes can be stored in a library. Now, does your text say that? No, this is not stated. And take the last one, computers can process information even if complete programs are not put in internal storage. Number 10, computers can process information even if complete programs are not put in internal storage. This is also not stated. Look at the third exercise, which is location information. You have to skim the text, go through it quickly to see where in the text I I these ideas are expressed. Now, in which paragraph is it stated that speed and random access are important in processing information? Speed and random access are important in processing information. If you scan, it is very early in the text, it is paragraph 2. Number 2, random access devices are more efficient than sequential devices. This information you will find in paragraph 4 and the CPU and primary memory work closely together. This is in para 2. Number 4. Virtual storage increases the memory capacity of a computer. Virtual storage increases the memory capacity of a computer. This is in paragraph 4. Number 5. Real storage, internal storage and primary memory are all the same. this you will find in the very first paragraph. Statement number 6, information is stored in memory in compartments with a specific location. Information is stored in memory in compartments with a specific location. This information is to be found in paragraph 2. Number 7, there are two classes of secondary memory devices. There are two classes of secondary memory device and that is in paragraph 4. Number 8, only parts of programs are kept in primary storage while a program is being run through. Only parts of programs are kept in primary storage while a program is being run through and this information you will find in paragraph 3. Now, we will look at exercise 4, contextual reference. Now, look back at the text and find out where the words that are given in bold type occur or where they refer to, what is it that they refer to. This is always a very interesting exercise. Number 1, it is also called and this is in paragraph 1. Find this phrase, it is also called and what does it 
refer to? What does it refer to? It refers to memory. Number two, depending on their storage capacity, and the word is there, on whose storage capacity, whose storage capacity is being referred to. It is in paragraph one, and it is referring to memories computers. Number three, thus making them, in paragraph two, you will find this phrase, thus making them. Now, what does them refer to? It refers to programs and data. It is in the plural, so it has to be two things. It must be them, uh, it must be programs and data. Number four, the former means that the former, the phrase former, the former, what does it refer to? In paragraph two, you will find this phrase and it refers to the former. It means random access. Number five, where the storage locations, where the storage locations, and this is in paragraph 2. What does the word where refer to? It refers to primary memory. Number 6, each having its own address, each having its own address, what does each refer to? Each refers to compartment, each compartment has its own address. And number 7, in that they do not change, what does they refer to? They refers to, in paragraph 2, to addresses of houses. Number 8, where to find them, them, them refers to addresses, it is in the plural, it is referring to more than one thing, so it has to be something in the plural, it is addresses. Number 9, whatever must go there, whatever must go there, T H E R E, and there refers to compartments. And the last one, number 10, or parts of it, in paragraph 3, find this phrase, or parts of it. And what is it referring to? It is referring to program. Let us move on to exercise 5, which is a vocabulary exercise. By this time, you must have realized that all of these passages are on the same pattern. And number 5 is always a vocabulary item. It tests your, it teaches you vocabulary. Now, you refer back to the text and find the synonyms, find, find words that are more or less the same in meaning. There is a word in paragraph 1 which is the same in meaning as the word represented. Can you think of a word, can you locate the word which means the same as represented and it is the word expressed. Number 2, erases. In paragraph 2, there is a word over there which means the same as erases. It might not be a word, it could be a phrase and the phrase is wipes out, wipes out. Number 3, the phrase carried out. Is there a word in your text in paragraph 3, which means the same as carried out, to carry out something, carry out orders, 
you carry out the orders of your superiors and the word is executed. Number 4, before and in paragraph 4, there is a word which means the same as before and that is preceding. You have got your prefix preceding that which came earlier on, right? It is on the preceding page. Number 5, very much. The phrase very much in paragraph 4. Is there a word in paragraph 4 which you could substitute for very much? And it is the word considerably, considerably. Now, go back to the text again and look for words that are opposite in meaning to the words that I shall read out. Number one, uh, number six, the word latter. Is there a word in your text which is the opposite in meaning to the word latter? Latter means opposite. The opposite of latter is former. Number seven, disallow. In paragraph four, find a word which you can which is the opposite in meaning to disallow. When you disallow somebody, the opposite would be require, required. Number eight, unnecessary. Paragraph, same paragraph, the word unnecessary and the word that is opposite in meaning is permit. Number nine, the phrase go through go through, go through its opposite would be bypass when you leave something and go around it, bypass. Go through is when you go straight across it. And number 10, imaginary. Is there a word in paragraph 4 which is the opposite in meaning to the word imaginary and it is the word real real is opposite to the word imaginary. Now, we will do an exercise in word forms, how the form of the word changes and you choose the appropriate form of the words to complete the sentences and then you can check the differences in meaning. The words are number one, four words expression, expressive, express, expressed. Different forms of the word. Information sent via a computer is faster than using system of airlines or postal services. Which form? of that word, of those words would be appropriate over here and it is the word express, express, be such as he or she has a computer of a brain means that he or she is a fast thinking person. So, those words that are in inverted commas. There is a word in the English language which you can use for that and that is expression. You have got many expressions. Tit for tat, that is an expression, right? A computer of a brain, right? That is an expression. And see, computers understand commands in the form of 0 and 1. And the word is expressed. Number two, again there are four words equality, equal, equally, equalize, right? Verbs, nouns, adjectives, sometimes you even have adverbs over there. And you have to see which one 
would be appropriate in which context? Number A, the symbol and the symbol is given you means that two things are not equal, are not equal. Notice the symbol two parallel lines, short parallel lines with a line going through them, which means that it is not, it is in the negative are not equal, right. B, a microcomputer does not a mini computer in flexibility and the only word would be appropriate word would be equal. Number C, the two computer languages Pascal and PL1 are equally difficult, right. Number 3, again four words consideration, consider, considerable and considerably. Number A, there is a difference between written and spoken English. So, which words, which word would be appropriate? You cannot have consideration, consider, considerable. There is a considerable difference between written and spoken English. B, it is important to consider the capabilities and limitations of a computer before buying one. And C, new printers can print results considerably faster than previously, right. Number 4 and it is the word design, design, designed, designation, designer and designing. A, due to the advances in computer technology, computer are faced with a more challenging job. So, it has to be a noun, computer designers, not designer, but designers, because the gap is followed by are faced in the plural. So, due to the advances in computer technology, computer designers in the plural are faced with a more challenging job. B, computers are to process information accurately and quickly. Computers are, you have got a clue, it is a verb, are designed the helping verb is there, you have to have the other part of the verb, are designed. And C, computer art architects are constantly trying to improve, improve on the, the and you know that the word the always accompanies a noun or a pronoun and the noun over here is on the design of computers, right. And number 5, you have got three words, advertisement, advertise and advertised, right. A, there are many computer related jobs in the New York Times, simple advertised, d in the past tense advertised. Number B, the computer center will soon for more operators and programmers, the computer center will advertise. And C, career opportunities in computer science and related fields can usually be found in the section of newspapers. Again, use your knowledge of grammar, the grammatical knowledge and the word is advertisements, because you have got the before that coming before it. So, it has to be the advertisements, right. Now, let us do an exercise in which 
the contents of the text are reviewed and you have to match the words in column A with the words given in column B. Look at the two lists and quickly match phrases in A with phrases in B, column B. Internal storage, internal storage, what would it match with? What would it match with? Does it, is it, does it go with A means any part of memory can be read quickly, equally? No. The information contained in the storage locations, all right, move on, move on. Are storage locations in internal storage? No. Refers to memory contained in the storage locations, that is it. Number 1 matches with number D, right. Now, let us look at number 2. Number 2 says real storage. Real storage means any part of memory can be read quickly and equally. B, the information contained in the storage locations. C, D, E, E, hooking up second. Sometimes it is F, F sometimes called primary memory, right. Now, let us go back to number 3. Random access means, let us look at from the beginning, means any part of memory can be read quickly, equally and quickly. Yes, number 3 matches with number A. And number 4 addresses, yes, it matches with number C, our storage locations. Let us look at number 5, contents. What are contents? What does uh, the word contents match with? Let us go to the beginning. Contents matches with B, the information contained in the storage locations. All right. Let us look at number 6. So, we use the elimination process. Now, you uh, which ones are left now? Sequential access could refer to information must be read from secondary memory devices in a fixed pattern. Yes, it is G. And number 7, virtual storage. Virtual storage would match with Yes, you are left with E. So, it is hooking up secondary memory devices onto memory to increase their capacity. Right. Now, let us look at focus review. Now, in this lesson, we are going to focus on how writers use examples to explain a point or to illustrate an idea which is given in a text. And it is important to differentiate between the idea and the illustration of the idea with examples. And writers often say explicitly, very clearly, which things are examples by using connectives. And these connectives are, for example, such as, right? Now, you look at the following table. A table is given you and you complete it 
by referring to the text, right? the text on primary and secondary memory and you locate the connectives that have been used for illustrations and examples. Right? Now, in paragraph 1, the table has three headings. One is items or item to be exemplified. In some, the items are given you. In some, you find the example of the marker that has been used, the marker meaning uh, example. And then you have an actual example. Are you with me? The table has three, three parts. The first part refers to the item that you have, that the writer tries to illustrate. Then there is a column where the connective, where that word is used, which is used for an example. And then in the third column, you have to fill out the actual example as it is given in the text. In paragraph 1, the item has been given you, the item is quantities of k. What is the example marker that is used? The marker used is for example and the actual example given is memories of 16 k or 152 k. In paragraph 4, you find an example, the word an example is there. You have to find out what item is being exemplified and you have to actu give the actual example. Scan paragraph 4 and you will find that the word, the phrase an example refers to sequential devices and the actual example is magnetic tape. In the same paragraph, you will find an example given you. The example is magnetic disk and you have to locate the item and then the example marker and the item is random access devices and the marker is an example. Notice sometimes it is an example, sometimes it is for example, all right. And in paragraph 4, still in the same paragraph, there is an item given you and the item is virtual storage. Look for the example marker and the actual example. Just look for the word example, for example. This time it is for example and for example, it is followed by the phrase 256k of real storage may be seen to have 512k. Now, I am going to tell you something else and this is about how writers add information. There are many reasons why people read, but in an academic setting, reading is primarily done to get information on a particular subject. Now, it is important for the reader to understand the relationship between the information given and the information which preceded it, the information that came earlier. Now, often information is presented in such a way as to suggest a reinforcement, a reinforcement of what has been said or to show a similarity of what has been said before. Now, when writers give explanations about something, they usually offer examples to support their argument in favor of a particular point. Now, they can do this in two ways. They can present the information deductively, which means 
that a rule or a generalization is given first and then examples are given in support of the general statement or principle. Some writers like to do it this way. Others prefer, prefer to give examples first and then make the generalization. This form of presentation is known as inductive. So, there are two ways of presenting information. One is deductive and the other is inductive. Now, when uh, writers use argument to reinforce, to support what they have said earlier, they use typical markers. And you as a reader, if you are aware what is the meaning of that marker, it will help you in grasping the point that the writer is making. For example, uh, on your screen, you will see this statement. In addition to their speed, computers are accurate and can do repetitive operations over and over again without becoming tired or bored. Now, in that statement, there is one phrase which is a phrase of reinforcement. It is reinforcing, it is repeating, saying again what is it has said earlier and the f you can pick out the phrase, the reinforcement marker and that is the phrase in addition to. The second example, microcomputers are cheaper than mainframes as well as being compact and portable. Now, you pick out the reinforcement marker in that statement microcomputers are cheaper than mainframes as well as being compact and portable. There is a phrase over there that reinforces what the first half of the sentence says. You pick it up, pick it out, right. Now, the other, other uh, technique is that of similarity and I will again read out two statements. I will give you the example in the first one and you look up the example in the second one. In the first statement, microcomputers can have a storage capacity of up to 32k, likewise mini computers. Now, in that sentence, there is a phrase mark, there is a marker which denotes, which shows similarity and that is the word likewise. What is said in the first half of the statement is repeated again and it is the word likewise. You read the second statement and you find out for yourself what marker is used there. Many, many computers are used merely for a fixed application and run only a single program. Microcomputers operate in much the same way as in the case as is the case in automobile emission control systems. And with that, we come to the end of today's lesson. Hope to see you next time. Allah Hafiz.